So I'm back at the Harley Street Clinic talking to Dr. Arma Khan. And um, I have a question that's been uh, worrying me recently because I've been told, and I'm beginning to notice myself, that as you get older, um, treatments might become less effective. And I was actually told that by another doctor that when you get to a certain age, treatments and treatments don't really work and they become a loss a lot less effective so i really wanted to speak to dr khan about this and find out how true it is there is there is truth to that um, as we age then the actual integrity of our tissues deteriorates um, you know we know that throughout life we're losing about one percent of collagen per year um, and that relates to, to cellular activity as well. So if we are degrading by 1% per year, by the, by the time we're 50, about 50% of our collagen still remains and is effective. And we start losing our collagen in our 20s, don't we? Well, we yeah, we're, we're losing it all the time. Um, yeah. Under the age of 35, we're in a regenerative sort of state. So we're producing collagen as well. We're producing more than we're losing. So that maintains things. Um, however, after 35, th that's what I call the tipping point. That's when right. we really start to age. We start to, to sort of lose more than we're producing. And that's the natural um, aging process. And Well, exactly. And that's why these treatments were invented. And that's why treatments were invented. So that when you start aging, mm. it can start to compensate or give your skin back some of that integrity that it's losing. That's the Absolutely. whole point of it. So to then hear that when you get to a certain age, they don't work. Well, it depends when you start these treatments. Right. You see, if, if, you, if somebody were to start the treatments, which were to stimulate more collagen production mm -hmm. and regeneration of the tissues. Like the, like the, the, uh, the radio frequency, frequency. treatments, which I do love and, mm. and have done for um, a number of years now, things like uh, fracture of fern. Mm. Yes. And, I, and, and even though, sorry to interrupt you, even though um, uh, you, I never saw a big difference, I felt that it was having an accumulative effect. Absolutely. Would um, you say that's true? Yeah, definitely, because every strand of collagen you produce has a very long half-life. The half-life of collagen is about 15 years. Now, clearly that's degrading as we get older. And after the menopause in women, um, that degradation accelerates from 1% per year to 1.5% per year. Yes, we, we talked about that, didn't mm. we, in our previous interview? Absolutely. We, we talked all about uh, why yeah. we aged so rapidly after the menopause. Yes. yes. So, in, in effect, it's even more important to, to add to your collagen stores. So, every strand of collagen that we produce has a half-life of 15 years. So if we do regular treatments, we're regularly adding to our basic store of collagen. Um, and would you say, so for someone like myself, who probably, so I'm in my 60s now, and mm -hmm. then in my 50s, I probably began doing radio frequency treatments. Yeah. I can't remember when actually, but yeah, probably in my early 50s or sure. something. So do you think that would have would have helped me? And, and is it something, for example, someone like myself should continue doing? Absolutely. It's worth doing? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, though they become less effective because our intracellular communication starts to deteriorate as well mm -hmm. as one of the hallmarks of ageing. Um, by stimulating it, we're actually improving it. So radiofrequency helps because it helps to settle inflammation. It helps to stimulate the cells that are there, mm -hmm. um, and it helps to regenerate cells. Now, the other thing that we should really think about after the menopause is low-level light therapy. It's the red light, yeah. um, particularly the red and near-infrared lights. And what they do is they actually inhibit the breakdown of collagen by collagenase in right. the body. Right. So estrogen has... Um, an inhibitory effect. It's not total inhibition, it's partial inhibition. So when we've got estrogens on board, when women have, then the breakdown of collagen is slowed down. Mm -hmm. After the menopause, our natural estrogens reduce, so that accelerates the breakdown of collagen. Right. Um, so by using Saluma, it yes. can partially inhibit those collagenase 
by about three months. I think that's the natural half-life. Right, right. So if you did regular saliva treatments, right. that would help to slow down the degradation. It's not adding more, it's slowing down the degradation. Right. So if you then think, if we think intelligently about slowing down the degradation right. and reversing the aging process through re regeneration right. and increasing collagen production, then we can start to counteract some of the signs of aging. Right. So you think that um, it is worth continuing because you know one person said to me really after the age of 50 something mm. um, there's really nothing left for you other than surgery it, it again that depends on whether you've done anything when you've been younger yeah so people who do nothing until they're in their 50s if their first treatment is at 50 then we have to assess at that point right now Everybody's different genetically. Right. You know, if you came to me now and said, I want surgery, I'd probably say you don't need surgery because you're not physically at that stage. You haven't got huge amounts of excess tissue, you haven't got a huge amount of, of slide or sagging, and indeed your skin is quite good genetically and as a result of what you've been doing. Yeah. So people who start earlier with little and often and maintenance yes. can help prevent that from happening. So what I'm curious about for um, for people who do um, uh, Botox and fillers which you know so many people do would something like is something like that less effective as well as you get older or, 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 or things like Botox and fillers will always work? Everything is effective I mean we, we know that, that fillers if they're cross-linked they're not going to produce an excessive amount of collagen. However, the process of introducing them, the trauma to the tissues, mm -hmm. is going to stimulate a regeneration. So the whole so so, so things like Botox and, and fillers won't become less effective as you get older. They will. Oh, they will. However, because you've prevented the deep lines and wrinkles, you don't need them to be that effective, because the muscles are becoming weaker, they're becoming thinner. Right. Um, and if you're your muscles have been trained into being in a relaxed, balanced state, then it's a great preventer. Whereas if you have done if you've done nothing and you, you've got really strong expressions, right. then it's going to be less effective right. as a first treatment. Um, whereas if you're coming in in your thirties with really strong expressions, you're gonna have a more effective outcome. Right. So even something like that will actually have an accumulative effect that will help you as you age. Absolutely, yeah. So, well that's, well, that's interesting, obviously, because I've had my website for about um, eight years, I think, or yeah. eight or nine years. So I've been trying out all kinds of treatments mm. and things. So I, I feel a bit better now, because so I feel that all those little things I've been doing, even though it, there was nothing really that I saw a huge result with, yeah. but all those, those things would have had an accumulative. Absolutely. Effect. Yeah. So, well, that's, so well, that, that's good. You do make me feel better because I was the, the impression I was getting from some other people was mm. that um, you know really there's just no point in doing anything. It's surgery or nothing. Over fifty and especially over sixty, which I which which is a rather depressing viewpoint, really. Yeah, but but I think there's been this this movement. Um, Technology has been improving. Our techniques have been improving, our understanding of the aging process, mm -hmm. not just um, physiologically, but physically as well. Right. You know, with the different slides, the different layers of the face, and how they age individually to give you the overall look. Um, and I think by understanding that, what we've done is we've pushed the age for surgery further and further down the road. Ah. Um, so, you know, yes. Is there, is there an optimum age for surgery? I think everybody has to be assessed on an individual basis right. um, based on you know where they are at that point now if there is a lot of slide a lot of excess tissue mm -hmm. a lot of volume change then maybe surgery is going to be the main port of call for them right. um, whereas if there's very little slide and the tissues are still good and they've had treatments and they've maintained things yeah then non-surgical um, alternatives now when we talk about non-surgical, yes. you know, non-surgical are Botox and fillers. Yes. But fillers border on surgical because you're going into the surgical plane. Right, right. You're going into the deeper planes. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about non-surgical, I think we've got to be clear about the points that 
anything under the skin is virgin or surgical. Right. It's, well, it's invasive. The, it's the moment invasive. you introduce a, a needle, it's, yeah. it's invasive. Yeah. So you're in the surgical plane, and when you start moving tissues around, particularly with sutures and, and threads, right. then that is a surgical procedure. But it's a non-cutting surgical procedure. Right. And are, are, are you referring to thread lifts and thread lifts and also um, deeper um, lifts like the French lift. Right. Um, so so these are much deeper repositioning of tissues. Right. Which are carried out. So by you don't. There's anyway. no incision, but there are there are puncture incisions, oh, little right, ones. Right, right. We go through those. Um, but where we have to access the deeper tissues, it's surgical. And I like to classify it as excisional surgery, where we're cutting tissue away. Right. And there's so much excess tissue that that's all you yes. can do. Um, and then the non-excisional, where you can get away with just repositioning. Yeah. And um, just one more question along those lines. So if, if um, on the surface it looks like treatments mm. um, are less effective, you're going to see maybe less of a result as you get older, would the same apply to products? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, you know, when it, we're, we're talking about responses, whenever we do anything, whenever we put on a, an active product, um, the product has a function. It interacts with the skin, with the tissues, to get a response. Now, if the skin has slowed so far, slowed up so, so much, mm -hmm. that the intracellular communication is so poor, mm -hmm. that response is going to be less than it would be if the cells are active. Right. And this is where stimulation treatments come in. Right. You know, like radiofrequency, where you increase intracellular communication. So, what so they'll also make your products more effective. Absolutely. So when we have a combination approach where we're thinking about nutrition, we're thinking about stimulation with energy treatments, and we're thinking about chemical signaling as well through the products, then they work really well together. So you mentioned nutrition. Mm -hmm. So, as, as I always say on Ageless, so nutrition is extremely important. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You know, if we have very poor nutrition, we haven't got the basis of regeneration. And, and what we're talking about is regeneration and rejuvenation, rather than just patching and fixing. Yeah, I, I've always thought that. I've always thought, you know, if you just don't look after yourself from the inside, if you're not taking care, if, you, if you're not administering self-care and showing yourself love by eating mm. good foods and taking care yeah. of yourself and then you come and, and try and get everything done to your face artificially yeah. um you know I, mm. I i like the best of both worlds and i'm i'm pleased to hear uh, what you're saying there about because those are my two favorite treatments because they're, they're quite relaxing they're completely painless and that is the red light mm. and um and the and the radio frequency so and i have done them for a while now yeah. so so th that sounds like a good thing to do and um great good and i think you. you know and i think they work really well you combine that with protection with sunblocks yes and sunblock, um, yes you know and, and i think and but also let's let's not be too scared of the sun because the sun is really good for us as well in controlled exposures Yes, so, you know, and that's a whole other sport. subject that I want to it talk is. to you about Absolutely. one day. Yeah. Yes, because I think people are scared of the sun. On the other hand, and especially if you use products like retinol, mm. you do have to protect you your have to skin. Yeah. yeah, but there's sensible sun exposure. Yes, yes. And we'll talk about yes. that later. <laughs> <laughs>